Okay, I know you guys are excited about getting to uh, write some code with around the Spring Framework, but first we're going to pause and take a look at our GitHub workflow. Now, I've had a lot of students take this course. I think there's like over 40,000 now that have enrolled through the course, and I get this question a lot about how should I be working with the GitHub repositories. Now, I, I do have a process that's very uh, helpful for you. Uh, GitHub is not a requirement uh, for this course. It is something very helpful for you to have. Uh, if you are new to GitHub, uh, check out Appendix A of the course. There's additional videos on that, uh, links to videos. There's a ton of free content on, on GitHub out there if you're not familiar with GitHub. But in this video, what I'm going to be doing is talking to you about the workflow. There's a specific workflow that can really help you out with the course. So I'm going to jump over to uh, a little video here to talk about the workflow and you get to see my uh, mad skills with uh, Adobe After Effects, my very first uh, little info uh, video that I've done with After Effects. So hope you enjoy this section and uh, we will get you up to speed on how to use GitHub uh, to your benefit while you're taking this course. All source code examples for the course are inside of GitHub. I use Git branches for each lesson. Now you're going to get a starting branch which is the state of the code at the beginning of the lesson. Changes that I make inside the lesson are then saved to an ending branch. You'll find links to both branches in the course resources. Using branches like this has two big benefits. First, I can go back and update for any errors or new releases of Spring. Second, you can compare your work to my branches. To make comparisons easier, I recommend people use this workflow. First, fork my repository to your own GitHub account. GitHub is completely free to use. If you need help with GitHub, check out Appendix A of this course for a collection of videos about how to use GitHub. Once you have forked my repository to your account, check out your fork from your GitHub account to your own local workspace. Start with the master branch and then follow along the coding exercises in the course. The hands-on coding will help you learn and absorb the material in the course. If you have any problems, you can do a comparison from your own local workspace to the relevant branches inside of my GitHub repository. This will help you identify any differences. Also, by having your own repository, you can share this with others if you run into any problems and need help, or you can also show this to future employers to show them your work. Now, if you're uncertain about these steps, don't worry. In the remainder of this video, I'm going to show you each step, step by step. So the first thing we want to do in our workflow process is to fork the, my repository to your own GitHub account. So your GitHub account is completely free. If you don't have one, it only takes a minute to sign up. Uh, and I'm going to jump over to Chrome and show you exactly how to fork my repository to your own GitHub account. Okay, forking a repository is very simple to do. I am signed into a different GitHub account. This is a very old account that I had and uh, simulating what you would do. So I am at the Spring Framework Guru repository, but on a different GitHub account. So this is exactly what you would be to do. To fork it, all I have to do is come up here and click on fork. And it asks me, where do I want to go? I'm going to say right there. And it only takes a few seconds. You can see that it's saying that it's forking. We get this little uh, icon here. And now this is forked into my GitHub repository. And you can see here that it knows that it's been forked. So it says that it's coming from here. So if you ever want to go back to my repository from your own GitHub repository, just simply click on this and you'll see that get back to the original source, which is my repository. But here, this is a repository that you will be using for the course. Okay, the next step in the process is to clone the repository or check it out of GitHub. So I'm going to go through and show you exactly how to do this now. Now, cloning the repository is also a very simple process. So I'm still in my other GitHub account, and this is where I forked to. I'm going to come up here and say clone. Just clicking this to this copies the URL over to the clipboard. And you do have an option of HTTPS or SSH. Uh, I like SSH in a POSIX environment being uh, Mac OS or Linux. If you're on Windows, HTTPS is probably going to generally work out better for you. And I'm going to jump over. I'm going to show you two different ways that we can clone. First way, we can just come over to the command line. And this assumes that you do have Git 
installed on your machine. So uh, change to the directory that you wish to be working in for your, your workspace. And all you got to do is issue the command git clone and then paste in that URL, hit enter. And you can see that git has gone and cloned that repository. If I do a, a directory here, you can see there's that spring app. And then there's the, the working files within it. So now I'm ready to start developing on this. The second way to clone out of GitHub is you can do it right from IntelliJ. So let me toggle over to IntelliJ and show you that now. So here I am in IntelliJ. Just come up to File, New, Project from Version Control. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that. And let's call this two. I think I already have one in that temp directory. So let's go ahead and clone it. And it's going to say yes. Now, when it first opens it up, it might not detect that it is a Maven project. And IntelliJ is a little inconsistent on this. So sometimes it does, sometimes it does not. And it might be on the particular flavor of IntelliJ I'm using. If it does not detect it, which it looks like in this example, it has not, has it? Actually, it did. So uh, it did pick up that it is a Maven project. If it does not, like I said, that it is a little random. If it is not, just come in here, uh, right click, and you'll see in here an option to add it as a Maven project. So uh, like I said, it, it seems to be completely random. Sometimes it picks it up as a Maven project. When I was testing it, it did not. Uh, here it did. So just one of those uh, weird quirky, quirky things that you see now and then. But here, now again, this is now cloned to my local repository, and I'm all ready to start developing against it. So the whole reason we forked the repository to your own and then cloned it is so that you can uh, do comparison. So being able to compare uh, your, your state of your code to my different branches that are going to be in there is a very powerful tool. I'm going to go over to IntelliJ now and show you exactly how easy that is to do. Okay, doing a compare is uh, really easy. Just to, for purposes here, I'm going to go ahead and add a class. And I always like this uh, compact middle packages. It makes things a little bit easier for us. Uh, I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to add in a uh, foo class because uh, this is just temporary. I'm, I'm adding this in just as an example. So we're going to go ahead and uh, air quotes add it to get. Um, this is a throwaway repository for me uh, just for purposes of this class. So now what I want to do to do a comparison against GitHub, I come in here, I right click, and the comparison is going to be based on the folder that you are clicking on. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to compare the entire project. I'm clicking on the root of the source folder. Actually, I could do the top level project folder too if I wanted to. So I just come down here, click on compare with branch. And if you had any other branches checked out, you would see them here. Origin means that the origin inside of GitHub. So let's go ahead and take a look at, no, oh, we'll do adding uh, time leaf. That should give us a bunch of changes. So what you can see here, where things are in gray, uh, that means that is not there. So if I just come up here and say book controller, if I click on that, we can see that there is no local resource to compare against. And green, the food job, and I added that in to show you here, this only exists in my uh, repository locally. So now here, this one in blue, that means there's differences. So I have the file here and it's not shown. So if I come in here and double click on this, now we can see here, this is saying that that is the remote version and here's my version. So this line has been added. So we're seeing the, the difference there. And IntelliJ does a real nice job of showing you the differences. So if you do have any differences, if you have something that's not working, now you can go and compare your source code against my source code. Okay, you can see exactly how easy it is to do comparisons against branches inside of GitHub inside of your own repository. But what happens if I make changes, if I did some type of uh, patch while you're taking the course since you forked? Very simple to do. What we can do is tell git to look at my repository as well. Very simple command to do that. And now when, when we do this from IntelliJ, you'll be able to do comparisons to your own forked repository and to my repository as well to see if I've changed anything, if I've done uh, any updates to versions 
or possible bug fixes. So I'm going to show you exactly how to set that up right now inside of IntelliJ. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to add another remote repo to our GitHub configuration locally. So here on the screen, I have where I, the fork that I did. Now what I want to do is I want to grab this guy right here, go to, into the original repository, and now I want to copy this URL here. Now I'm going to come back over to IntelliJ. And in IntelliJ, I'm going to go into the terminal. Now this terminal location, uh, you just need to do this from the command line. And you want to issue a very, very simple command. Again, you need to have git installed on your machine. Just do git remote add and then paste in that value there. Made one mistake there, so I want to do git remote add. And here I'm going to call it SFG repo. I missed the name previously. And then paste in the URL. So I'm going to call that SFG re repo for that. And now that is happy. Now if I come up here and I want to do a git fetch. So what this is going to do is, it looks like it's dropping off the screen there. Sorry about that. So I'm going to go out and do a git fetch. I could also do that from a command line, just do git fetch. And that tells uh, git to go out to the uh, top level repository and pull down new information. Now, if I come in here and I do a, a, a git uh, compare, compare with branch, you can see I have origin and then I have uh, SFG repo. So these are all the branches inside the original repository. So SFG repo is going to be my repository. Origin will be your repository inside of GitHub. So this allows you to see any changes that I've made to the source code since you forked your own repo. Any changes that I made are not going to be pushed to yours. So this is how you can see any changes that are made since you did the fork.